it could be any walk of life. Like you could want a doctor, you could want to be a teacher, a lawyer. You might have, we might be all going out. You've got a finals or an exam tomorrow. You can't go. Mm. That's the sacrifice. Mm. In mm. sport, your friends are drinking. You got pre like my friends went out the other day. I had pre-season on Monday. I can't drink no more. Because when I'm running, you're not running with me. Mm-hmm. When I'm trying to get to that line and I can't because I've been drinking, I can't do it. So they're the sacrifices that these people have to be made. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to another episode of the Good Man Factory podcast. Uh, today we have, I can't even call him a special guest, but he's, he's special for sure. We've got good man Rizzy here joining <laughs> nice us to today. Here. Got good man Jamal, special guest, a new guest, first time as well, Jamal, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yes, We go into a bit more about what you do. And then we've also got good man Tob here and you've got good man Manny as well. Is it right if I call you good man Tob? Because some people don't like that. Tolu, oh my gosh. Why yeah. did I have you know what? I have to start again. <laughs> yeah, I've got to start again. You know what? I was introducing me as T. I was, I was thinking, like, is that another name? You're, You're gonna have to start <laughs> again. You know what is yeah? I had Toby in my that's, head, so I was saying Toby because uh, that's a that's a habit. No, of at saying first of all, did he did he, did he Slip of the tongue. Uh, authenticity can't then, be beaten. Uh, no, no, we've got to start again. <laughs> yeah, we've got to start again. Let's start again. Let's start again. And then I'm going to tell people I made the mistake now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yo, yo, yo. It's another episode of the Goodman Factory. <laughs> today we've got a special guest. Uh, we've got Goodman Jamal here joining us today. Professional football player. So we're hoping to get some gems from him and just learn about his experience and, and, and talk a bit more about that. We've also got Goodman Rizzy as well. Nice another special here. guest. Nice to be here. Thank you. We've also got good man Tolu here. There's a joke behind this, but I'm never gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna go into it. But we've got good man Tolu here, and obviously, as usual, we've got good man Malik on the camera doing his thing. So, actually, before we start, gonna give you a quick plug. So, if you go on the Good Man Factory website, Good Man Factory, well, www.goodmanfactory.com, if you type in GPod One, am I right? Gpod one, yeah. you get yourself a fifteen percent discount code on our fantastic Goodman products. So please make sure you use that, maximize that, and bless someone today with that. Let's get started. So today we're going to discuss mentoring. We're going to talk about the importance of mentoring, um, the qualities I think of a good men- mentor, and probably finish off with some tips and some advice that we would give to anyone that's considering mentoring and what we would do in terms of mentoring young people. So I guess just to kind of throw it out there and to start off with, gents, when you think about mentoring for yourself, have you had a positive or negative experience with mentoring? Have you been mentored yourself in the past? If so, by whom? And what was the impact of that? I'm going to throw it out to you, T, actually. Um, Not really, but I think I've had male influences and figures in my life who have made sure... I stayed on a on a certain path or helped me realize my potential. You know, especially when you're in school or college or, or uni, it's always like, you know, you've got a lot of potential. Don't mess it up, do this. Um in college it was a teacher called John Davis, which I've spoken about on the podcast before. Um and I guess it's just older kids in the area as well who you know what? The barbershop as well. The barbers always dropping gems, always... I don't know where they get their knowledge or how many people have to sit in their chair for them to sort of regurgitate what they've been told. But um, I think the, my barber, Marcus, he he's always dropped so many gems of wisdom and knowledge and sometimes you don't realise how much it resonates with you. So I guess that's a form of mentorship in a way. So for me, as long as you're gaining some sort of knowledge and then you can one day apply it for for wisdom and apply that wisdom... Dennis, yeah, yeah, that was, you can attribute that to a mentor. Okay, okay. So for you, you're saying that you haven't really had like a structured type of mentoring process Mm -hmm. or program, Mm -hmm. but you can identify people outside of the home who have shown qualities of a mentor or in some parts have contributed to your life Mm -hmm. through some type of mentorship. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Jamal? Um, I'm quite lucky, to be fair, because... I've got both my parents still in my life. So my first mentors were my mum and dad. So at the time when you're growing up, they're telling you, they're teaching you things. You're not really listening. You're a young kid. And mm. as you grow up and you realise, raw, what they said actually is now resonating with my life. Mm. Um, and then I've always played football. So I've always had 
um, that team structure. Um, and I always had older pros. So I was always the young one coming up. So I always have the older pros helping me. Then there's the managers as well. Some better mentors than others, but um, I've had quite a few. But the main, the start of it all was my, my parents. My mum was, um, had a solid job and my dad had a solid mind. So in that sense, I was so lucky and blessed. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's good. What about you, Riz? Lessons. Yeah, similar to T. So I've not had that structure there, but there are people that I look at as, you know, they've been mentors at some point in my life, but no one consistently. Um, it's probably best that I get one mm. as soon as possible, to be honest. Mm. It's interesting that you yeah. said it's best that you get one. Yeah, we're going to come to that as, uh, at some point. I think for me, um, similar to similar to kind of what everyone said, I never really had a structured mentoring process. Mm. I didn't have someone that was like, I'm your mentor and, you know, I'm your I'm your mentee now. Um, but I do, I do think about one guy in particular who was the youth pastor at the church that I was at. And he was a young man himself. I guess if I was a teenager, he had to have been in his late 20s, maybe early 30s. And he always had like us, the, 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 the youth at the church around him. We were welcome in his home. If we were traveling on trips, we were always going with him. He was the youth pastor, so it was his job, but you could see it was literally like his life. And him and his wife literally took us in. And so without me realizing it, he was a mentor for like a good number of years in my life because he showed me qualities that I hadn't seen in my own home or had seen from any other male figure. You know, um, he, like the way he treated his wife was kind of like- So was he, was he actively saying, I'm your mentor? No. Did you just take it from him? No, it's just in hindsight. I look back yeah. and I think a lot of things I learned and things that I saw yeah. for the first time I saw from him. Um, and I guess what made it even more interesting, but I guess maybe harder for me to look at him as a mentor at the time was like, he was a white guy from Scarborough. <laughs> so we had no real obvious kind of like thing in common, but I, I, what's the word? I gravitated towards him because he was always, it was more of like his characteristics. We talk a lot about like skills and qualities of people that we expect, that we sh do we expect men to have or that men should have like just being patient nurturing kind but being firm like you know if if you were out of line he'd let you know but you knew it was out of love that kind of thing mm. so he was like that big brother slash older man in my life and so the reason why i said it's similar to what you were saying though is because you know in hindsight also my parents were also mentors in some way yeah. um my dad in particular despite our very kind of like complex relationship very difficult relationship i can't say that he hasn't always done what a mentor or good mentor would do in some parts which is to always remind me that like you are like he basically put in put in my life things that i should prioritize like education working hard so he was very principled in the things he said whether he matched that up with the way he did things himself that's another conversation but he always told me stuff he spoke a lot and at the time it's like, oh, I was just talking, but I can grow up. I can literally now tell you word for word the things he would say, which tells you that actually he didn't take that for granted. He told us, don't be lazy. Don't take things from other people. Yeah. He always gave you some type of instruction or whatever. So, so I, I didn't have that structured protest, process of a mentor, but um, but I do look at figures in my life, especially that, that youth pastor, Pastor James, shout out Pastor James. And um, yeah, he was a very significant person in my life. As a, as a parent, one of your first jobs is to be a mentor to your children, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, but the ones that I had, like the managers and the, the older pros, they didn't know they was my mentors. Mm -hmm. I just, I was just watching and being a sponge and mm -hmm. thinking, all right, that's what you do and that's, that's the result you get, all right, cool. Then I'm seeing the other things that they're doing that didn't necessarily become a positive and I'm like, all right, that's what I'm not gonna do. So they didn't know they was my mentors. My mom and dad knew they was my mentors. Mm -hmm. But the managers and the players, they didn't know. I was just watching from afar, from a, from from close proximity, to find out what they're doing mm. and how I can. So if it's like an older pro playing at 36, 37, I'm like, I'm 17. Like, let me watch him to see what he's doing. Like, how can he have this longevity? How's he still playing? How's he looking after his body? What's he eating? What's he doing? Mm. And now that's what I am to the youth. But I'm showing the youth, like, I'm telling them, I am going to be physical mentor like, yeah. for you like you might not want it mm. but if you want to be like me mm. who's played since he left school only had like literally two jobs throughout my whole life then follow me i'm going to show you how to do it mm. like, follow my guide you know mm. so i think when you say that then definitely 
you got to give credit where credit's due because parents are your mentor. And I think my dad definitely taught me about the concept and the, the skill yeah. and the necessary, uh, the, necess- uh, the necessary things you have to do in life, such as reading. I don't think I would read or be reading if it wasn't for my dad mm. drumming it into me, make sure you read. And to this day, I still read. So I think, yeah, my dad was definitely a mentor. Parents do it in their own ways, isn't it? Yeah, you don't, yeah. you can't not even, always, yeah, you don't not, deep it. Yeah, not always the right way, but in their mind, it's the right way mm. or the way that they've been taught. They may not just get um, the delivery right. Mm. Oh, but what they're trying, <laughs> what they're trying to, they understand what they're trying to do. It just might not work for you. Mm. Like you might need a punch in the face or, and you might need a hug mm. to get your message across. Mm. But and parents make those mistakes. So I think we've got a, in some ways, I hope no parent thinks it's all right to give their son. A punch <laughs> I was thinking in the face. that as well. <laughs> Maybe not punch in the face, but you know, like yeah, a like snack a on, a right in the head. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. But um, yeah, I must chop. No, so like we different ways in which yeah. We so receive. there's there's parents. There's a method to the madness. Sometimes parents are doing it the first time, so they might get it the wrong. Yeah, mm, more often in that than way. Not. But so we're slightly got to forgive our parents yeah. because they were kind of winging it. Like yeah. parent, parent, parenting is winging it to an extent. Yeah, yeah. You know? So. I've got to give them some leeway and mm. try and understand the, 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 the message that they're trying to give us. Mm. At what point did you get to a point where you um, had like more, like you understood your parents a lot more and like you, t- um, you stopped judging them for like the things they did? I ain't stopped judging them. I was just about to say that. <laughs> <You're> still- <laughs> I can't lie, there's one episode. There's I ain't one, stopped. There's one episode where I was getting, I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. Mm. And, um, got in trouble, got arrested. At this point, I was at a professional club, Leighton Orient. And my mum told Leighton Orient what I did. Mm. In my mind, you're snitching. I was just like, like mum, you're snitching. Like, you, from like me what are you the doing? Bus. Mm. Wow. They suspended me. I was out of the, I was out for two weeks. Two weeks in football is like two years. Mm. So, when I was out of there, it just gave me a whole load of clarity. Like, how much do I actually want this? Mm. And um, to this day, I still say, mum, you messed up half my career, but <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. But it's like, she taught me the lesson. Mm. And now I've never been in that situation again. So yeah. it was quite, it was quite quick that I learned. It's quite quick. It's yeah. quite quick. That's a perfect example though. I wouldn't even say that's like, there's no real madness with that though. Like your mum, it sounds like your mum knew there was only one thing to do in this situation. Like, if you're going to get arrested, you're going to learn the implications of your actions. I'm not so, going to take away... Sorry, I'm not going to keep you in your little bubble, mm-hmm. which is what a lot of us parents also can do. That's the danger. Like, you know, when you kind of shelter your child so yeah. much so, you kind of almost create, quote-unquote, like a, a little demon because it's like they have no accountability for their own actions. 100%. So it sounds like for you, it's like you never now put yourself in that and situation without thinking about the fact that your mom's going to snip. 100%. <laughs> and that's where we're at now. That's where, that's I'm where sure at the time you was furious. <laughs> no, 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 listen. Like, she was an op. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, that's how I'll do like, it. This is my dream and yeah. this is what you're doing. But yeah. she said, yeah, but this is your doing. So don't blame me for your doing. Mm. At the time, I couldn't understand it. Yeah, mm. I still don't understand it. But you know what? Really? Mom, how could you? Oh. I sat, we, sat, we all sat there. I remember the faces. My coaches are looking at me, shaking their head because I had no reason to do what I was doing. Mm. But I was following my friends and doing things I shouldn't have been doing for the thrill of it. Mm. It wasn't smart, but kids do silly things, innit? Yeah. But I'm glad I did it because now I'm just on a different path. But like you said, parents are now enablers to their children. Mm. And in and in my profession now, I do I, I coach for Leon Orient under 15s as well. These kids are muddy coddled to the, too much, yeah. To the point where their behaviour is atrocious, and they're just letting get away with it. Some oh. coaches let them let them get away with not Orient, mm. but some coaches let these kids get away with everything. That's why when they get to a certain age, you can't tell them nothing. Mm-hmm. You can't tell them nothing. Yeah. So I, I'm at I'm at the stage where I'm telling them, listen, your behaviour is unacceptable. Mm. You're not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere like that. That was one of the be- one 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 um, episode always sticks in my mind. One of the boys, one of the best players in the academy, and when you're good at football, you're gonna get leeway. He was doing things like throwing his boots, throwing his hands out, walking off the pitch. When I was coaching, I said, "You're sitting there. You're not gonna play. Mm. G- game time come. You're not gonna play." He came, didn't play. Thought he was gonna play. He thought I was joking. You're not playing. Mm. You will learn because when I play you now, all the teammates are gonna look at you like, "Oh, I can get away with that." Mm. And I got that from my mum. Mm. 
my men, my first mentor. You act up, you're gonna get punished. The only way to punish someone is to take away what they love. Yeah, I love that. I remember that happened to me once when when I used to kick ball, and I was always late. And I'm not talking like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. I'm hate. talking like an hour late <laughs> mm. because you got to get there three hours before kickoff. Yeah. And it was a big game. I said, yeah, you know, it was me and my boy. We came around the back way, climbed over. We was just being rebellious for no reason. And the coach looked at us and said, you're not playing today. I said, all right. <laughs> I played last week and the week before that. All right, then, mate. And then <laughs> kept us on the bench. Didn't play. He didn't, you know what made it worse? He made us subs as well. Mm. So I thought I was coming on and... Oh man, I just remember thinking, oh, I could come on there, do oh, this. Yeah. Next week, um, I was about an hour early. Mm, I can't yeah, say I wasn't right. late again because shit happens, but I was honestly. But that yeah. was sticking on But to this day, I'm still trying to always be on time wherever I go because I know what it's like to miss out. Mm. I just said that to Malik earlier. I mm. called him half 11. I said, yeah, I'm here. He goes, bro, like half an hour early. I said, oh, if, I'm, mm. if I need to be somewhere, mm. Especially because playing in football, if you're late, you get fined. Yeah. Or the bus will leave you, you're not playing, as you know. But, so anytime I've got to be somewhere, I'm early. Mm. Even if it's for something serious or not serious. And this is what I'm trying to tell, teach these kids. The little things. They build that, up to good habits and bad habits. That's what I'm saying. Habits. So if you've got to be, if you're, if you're one minute late, you might as well be five minutes late, mm. 10 minutes late. Mm. Just be early. Mm. Plan your day, plan your time. It's good habits. It's part of it. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, we can segue into so many other things. You know how you was talking about the the player that you basically said to him, you're not coming on. It kind of reminds me of the Arteta situation a little bit at Arsenal because one one of the reasons that I respect him quite highly is I reckon he's coming to Arsenal with a very kind of non-negotiable attitude. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that goes towards the most senior pros like the Ozils, for instance. And it goes to even the young promising stars like the Gwenduzis, who maybe has the world at his feet. Yeah. But for him, it's just like, yo, if you're late or if I tell you something and then you go do it the next week or if you don't give me 100% in training, I don't care how much you're getting paid or what. And I think that's even harder to do for a professional 100. manager, yeah. like a manager for a professional football player that literally has far more followers on Instagram than you, mm. has far more trophies than you ever had as a player. But I reckon that that's the reason why Arsenal over the next few years, if Arteta's in, in, in management, whatever they do on the pitch is a whole other thing. But the culture will ultimately change because you've got a manager there that's saying, I've got my non-negotiables. And there aren't too many people that are like that because you've got coaches, like we said, the best players tend to kind of get away with whatever. You've you know? got to set it in stone from the get-go. Yeah. Set it in stone. And then, and then when it comes up, when it arises, then show, it's like, yeah. show, what, show what you're about. But then what happens when you've got a kid where that doesn't work? You know, they have that woe is me mentality. The world is against me. Now you're being harsh on me, telling me I can't play. All right. And then they act out even more. What would what you do then so with that, those kind of kids? So those, those kind of children, I take to the side. And it's never about that. It's about something that's going on in their life. Mm. When a kid has that, why is it always me? The world's against me. It's something else that's going on maybe at home, maybe at school, maybe with his friends. Mm. So I try and learn about my children. That's very good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Try and you gotta you gotta do it in a holistic way. Like it's it's not just uh why do you act like that? Mm. What what is the reason for it? Mm. Because sometimes someone might blow up off over a minor little thing. You're like, that made you go like that? Mm. No, it's something that happened earlier in the day or something happened in their life that they're now here and mm. it's their tranquility, but they're just you know, they're, they're in that mind frame that something else is bothering them. So you gotta Strip back the layers. Strip, strip, That's strip. That's very strip good, back. though. So it's, I can only imagine some people don't even have the time to do that. To do that. No. No, That's, it's, it's good, hard. that. Especially in a team dynamic, yeah. it is hard. You've got to find the time. And sometimes you, you can't do it all because you've got 20 players and you can't worry about the one player, but you have to. Have to. Especially at my level. like At my level where we're just trying to teach and nurture. Develop. And develop. Mm. When, it, when it gets to the pros, like Ozil's and the Abamians, then it's a bit harder, you know? Mm. Because there's, there's people with jobs on the line. Yeah, at yeah. my level, okay, great. I want to win football games. I want to teach you how to play football. And but mostly, I want you to become a better human, a better best version of yourself. Best version of yourself. Mm. See, in football, we call that man management ultimately, mm. but in education, we call that building relationships. Mm. It's the same thing ultimately. And there's something that I, you know I kind of use as a principle in the classroom, in that every behavior has a story. There's no such thing as a badly, there are badly behaved children, but it's not as a result of them just coming into this world and now 
you get it. There's an environmental yeah. effect yeah. on them. Yeah. There's trauma. There's all that types of things. So ultimately, every behavior has a story. Allows me to recognize that no matter what the behavior is, there's a reason for it. Whether I have the time to learn and understand it is a whole other matter. But that's the intention that we should have as a football coach, as a teacher, as a father. Whatever you get, it, like there's no real, there's no real kind of excuse, especially with young people, where you can't put like look at them or or take them to the side and think, I need to understand why you're behaving like that because your behavior doesn't define you. Your behavior is telling me a story about something. I need to know what that story is. And some of these kids have never been asked that question, mm. like what's wrong, mm. like what's your life like? How can I help? How's your day been like? Mm. In our culture, like coming up we had the kids that were bad. There's a reason for it. Mm. But no one's ever took the time to ask them why you're behaving like this. Mm. And then the coaches haven't got time. So they're just discarded. Mm. Whereas there's been so many kids that you, we all know guys that were so good at football, but for some reason he just couldn't do it. Attitude, these circumstances just didn't, they didn't align. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, that's that's the that's the reason why mm. the mentoring is so important to me. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, I think what what will be beneficial is just looking at it from a point of view. It's like if you can identify what the behavior is or what the issue is, and then try to understand it, and then lastly try and solve it. And that solving doesn't have to be with you alone. Mm. As a parent, you would do it with both you and your partner. Mm. As as a coach, you would do it with you and your team, your assistants. As a teacher, you do it with you and your staff. So I think that for me is a process that always seems to help, like trying to identify what the need is. There's a need there somewhere. If a child, for instance, is 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 ridiculously like annoying because they're just attention seeking, always shouting out, always has to be the first one, whatever. The need very clearly is that they're not really praised for doing maybe the good things regularly at home or, or in general. So they need to remind people, hey, hey, hey here I am always have to be seen. If the need is basically, I need to be heard. Attention. I need to be seen. Yeah. So when you identify the need, it then informs your practice. I now know that I need to be like, well done for coming in today on time. Little things. Well done. It's the little things because it builds up currency. Now the child won't feel the need to do that after six months because he genuinely trusts that the people around him sees him. Mm -hmm. And so the process is still identify the need, try and understand that. And if you don't know it yourself, learn, read, ask a member of staff, ask your other coach, and then after that, try and solve the problem. And I think that for me kind of helps generally. And I feel like you could use that in different environments, whether it's with your own child, whether it's with a, a football player, you know, trying to, or a child that you're mentoring. You can even use that with adults. Of course. Yeah. So everyone can use that. Even in relationships. Mm. Of course, <laughs> of course, relationships. Let's not go into relationships. <laughs> we'll, be here, we'll be here for for for, for ages. Awesome. But I want to go back to something. Well, there's two things that we said earlier. First of all, have you guys watched um, Your Honor on Now TV? No. Oh, never uh, someone made. Oh, Brian Crankson. Or is that the guy not? from um, Breaking Bad? Yes. Oh yeah, yes. I haven't. Mr. White. His oh, name's actually, not Mr. White. Actually, tell a lie. Tell a lie. His son does something crazy. He's a judge. Mad. Yeah. Oh, I please, just realized. Please, spoiler for me, please. I was just realized. <laughs> I was about to do a spoiler. Um, you can. No, no, no. I remember. It's fine. I think no, I'm, thinking for, I'm thinking for the audience. Yes, say spoiler alert. So okay, so spoiler alert. Anyway, so the reason why I'm talking about this is because we were talking about. Hear this. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Can I say it in a way where I don't reveal too much? <laughs> no, because I was no, no, no. I, I, I think I can because the first episode tells you what I'm about to say, shows you what I'm about to say, but I won't go into too much detail. You're gonna kill it, brother. I'm not gonna kill it. I try and be. I, I try and be very tactful about it. But but we was talking about how like sometimes we could protect our children too much, um, and that's dangerous. And the reason why I brought that up is because basically, Your Honor, the premise of the show is is, is based on the judge, a, a judge, like very well known, prominent judge, very well liked, very good at his job. His son commits a crime, and he has a decision to make: to hand his son in, or to protect his son. And initially, he attempts to do the right thing, and then. Then something he sees something that makes him realize, oh wait, maybe that's not a good idea. So then he kind of goes back against his decision and then tries to protect his son. And this spirals into a sequence of events mm. that ultimately may, may may end up good or bad. That's me trying to be good with my spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> but at the heart of all of that was basically his decision to protect his son. And me, so I've got my in-laws over at the moment. Um 
uh, and we were having a very good discussion basically because one one of my in-laws was saying was saying whoa what's going on here like you've just literally made a terrible bed for your child by now protecting them and now trying to like create a situation where we're going to like hide stuff mm -hmm. and you know like basically not take send you to prison or like or take you to the station that like we should do you're trying to protect him cover up something that you've done yeah. and then one of my other in-laws was like hmm, that's my child like you know yeah. and we had I a good debate i needed that in-law yeah we had a good it was it was <laughs> funny debate because basically <laughs> i'm telling you my partner would say she 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 asked her her she asked her dad and we all knew the answer before he even said it dad if i was ever in that situation like what would you do with he was before she even finished i'll hand you in what do you mean? You got to the police station. <laughs> <laughs> he said, sell our V or something like that. He said, okay, to do it. it is what yeah. it is. You know, like, and that's how he is. Very moral, very like principle based. Yeah. And like her mom was the opposite. Like we all laughed because we also knew her as well. I was like, if my daughter did it, her grandchild, she'd be in Mexico. Like we wouldn't even know where they are. They're in Cuba somewhere hiding. Like mm. fake passports. She, she ain't got time for that. <laughs> so it's just funny how the dynamics are different. But ultimately at the heart of that conversation, we were saying that like, it's funny, isn't it? Like, if that did happen, God forbid, to your child, what do you do in that situation? You know, Crazy. what's the lesson that you teach them by protecting them? Or what's the lesson that they, that you teach when you say to them, actually, you need to go to the station. Yeah. You committed this crime, yeah. whether whether malicious or not. Um, I'm not going to say any more about that because I feel like I'm going <laughs> to... Are, are, are we snitching on our children? Good question. There's a book I read. I'm, I was trying to remember the title, yeah. but I, uh, I can't remember it. But it talks about this and yeah. it, it says that every decision you make now will have an implication later on. Mm. So if you're always protecting your child, that child will believe they can get away yeah. with murder, yeah. literally. Mm. But if you're also too harsh on them, that child will be afraid to do anything in life and they'll just be within themselves. So it's about finding that balance. balance. There's times when yeah. to protect mm. them and there's times when you, it's like, yeah. you know what? I'm sorry, man, you gotta go. You gots to go. Mm. But, um, it's a, it's a hard one. It's it's my daughter already knows she can get away with anything. Really? My daughter will give me a look. Yeah. And that's it. You guys are running up to Mexico, <laughs> yeah? Packed I bags. With, I might run with her. Yeah. Oh. Passports. Now you're going on your own. No, it's serious. <laughs> like my daughter, she's four years old and I swear to you, she's got it down to a T. Mm. She knows. But it gets to a point where if it's if you killed someone, mm. let me hear the story first, how you done it and what happened. But <laughs> I'm protecting there with your child. You, I feel, yeah, I feel I'm protecting my daughter. Yeah. yeah, I mean, which is which is reasonable. Like, it's <laughs> our sorry. job as parents. It's not an easy decision. I'm telling you. What about you, Riz? Because you asked the question, you could get away with. You know, <laughs> you know what? I just can't imagine myself like going to turn my child in. Like, really? police, here you go. My child did this. Uh, it's not. It's it's not in me. Five old. So I'll, I'll protect my child. You know what? There's been so many sort of like interesting things. Well, not interesting, but things that have happened in real life. Um, like uh, the Harry Zoka guy when he got stabbed mm. and the family put pressure on, on on the son to hand himself in. What do you do? It's easy to say you wouldn't do it, but mm. if, it's, if it's getting all of this attention, you're seeing how loved the, the victim is as well. Mm. Can you really not protect it's, your child? It's not going to be I easy. I mean, can you really send your child to the walls? It wouldn't be easy. And you know what? Yeah, I've got the type of mum that will turn me in. Mm. Like yeah. she will snitch. Yeah, me too. You understand? I but I'm grateful that I've got a mum like that. Mm. I'm grateful that I know that listen, that's the way my mum is. So wrong. She's, she's if I try if I if I do anything, she's gonna do that. My mum will never snitch. You don't think? Never. Okay, this is this Sometimes I'm, I wish my mum was I'm, like that. I'm glad you both said that, that because your mums are quite different in their yeah. approaches. What do you think are the what do you think were the implications on you knowing that? Good question. If you're in the case that if you did a madness, mm your mum's not going to, to throw you to the wolves. Or that's quite an exaggerated thing. Well, she's not going to turn you in. What were the implications on that to you? And, oh, and I, likewise, I life likewise for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like, a... um, <laughs> for me, for a long time, that was how I knew my mum loved me. And I thought that's what love was. When you get into trouble, they're there for you. Mm. I wouldn't know you loved me on a normal day because you wouldn't tell me. And similar to what you were saying about the attention and the child wanting attention sometimes it was like okay cool i'll get in trouble because i knew that's when my mom will come and that's our relationship that's our bond so i guess the implication that i had was eventually you don't get away with murder you get into trouble mm. and even though your mom's helping you but when you've been caught 
and you're seeing the consequences of your actions and the impact it has, you're like, oh, you know what? Even though you're always going to save me, it's my turn to save you by changing my behavior. So, so you're saying that at some point you're able to make an active decision or you're able to recognize, actually, you know what? She shouldn't be protecting me no more. I'm going to now no, do the right thing. Because you see the you see the impact that certain things have have on, on your loved ones. What's that saying? Um, when you do something, if you go to jail or whatever, it's, it's, it doesn't just affect you, it affects it family, everybody. Okay. I can't remember the actual quote, mm. but it's like that. When you get into trouble, yeah. when you do something, and there's negative consequences. It doesn't just impact you. Even with your boys, if if your boy does something and you're helping your boy and your boy needs money, that's affecting yeah. you. Your boy needs somewhere to hide, that's affecting yeah. you. Your boy's done a madness and he's calling you. He's now implicating you. It, it doesn't just affect you. Nobody deals with anything, anything themselves. Mm. Why are you saying that though? No. I'm a firm believer in karma and the universe. Yeah. So whatever you do is coming back to you. Mm. So yeah, you're helping your daughter. Something's going to happen to her regardless mm. if she gets away with it. Whatever you did, something's going to come back to you tenfold. I'm a, I try and live my life by that mm. because I really believe in that. Mm. So. Just to clarify though, you're saying that your realisation came from consequences of your own actions. That's why you then made the decision yeah. actually, my mum protecting me. I need to make it wasn't decisions. always best for me I needed to start making my own decisions for myself so you, because, so because you, of negative things that happen yeah because you, one day you stop and you're like oh wait a minute <laughs> this I've taken it too far mm -hmm. and I'm seeing how it's it's impacting you similar to the conversation we was having off um, camera when you know when you realise how tired your mum is mm -hmm. because she's doing everything you're like oh wow like this really has been impacting you like my bad let me let me fix up fix up okay mm -hmm. What about you, Riz? What, what, what were the what was the impact or the effect on you growing up, knowing that if you did do anything wrong or made a mistake, mm -hmm. that your mum is going to hand you? Do you know what? Um, I just knew that I can't disappoint her. I knew there's certain things I can't do because I know the mother that I've got. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It definitely <laughs> stopped me from doing a lot of things that I really wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I just I saw it as like it's out of love. Like even though I hate the fact that you're like that, but it's like it's because you love me, you want the best for me, so you will turn me in. I would be mad. Same situation as yours. Like, you know, when your mum told Lay and Orient, that's something my mum will do. Do you understand? Like I'll just be pissed. Like why is my mum like this? But I know the mother I've got, and it's like I just see it as a positive thing. You might not be where you are now without. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, I am the way I am because of the mother I've got, you know? So yeah. if we were to summarize very small sample size, it sounds like parents the who, right thing to do. who do the right thing, yeah. right thing objectively, which is that, you know, if their child's made a mistake, they make the child accountable for their actions, take responsibility. Generally speaking, that seems to be more of a positive approach. Oh no, of course. I, I had to learn what accountability was later on in life mm -hmm. and the importance of it. And I lived my, I remember I had a year dedicated to just holding myself accountable to my past and my present and moving accordingly going forward. So yeah, I wish I had learned that mm, younger early. because then there's so much stuff that wouldn't have happened. Mm, that, you know, obviously growth is good and it's lessons that I learn and I can pass on. But sometimes you don't need to learn every lesson. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is it. That is it though. In, especially going back to mentoring, that is it, making these kids whether they're athletes or not aware that your actions have consequences and you ha you'll be held accountable for everything that you do mm. so yeah and i think i i think yeah. that's where um the word discipline comes into it because that is what discipline is like discipline is 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 like what you were saying about like being on time half an hour beforehand five minutes beforehand it's a discipline um and i think parents have a Parents or mentors have a very, very hard job, but a very important job of teaching discipline. Yeah. Because those disciplines are essentially what form good habits. Like if you're not disciplined in a certain area, it's gonna be very difficult for you to achieve it. I think we had Akin on last week, mm -hmm. right? And he was talking about and a lot of the things he was talking about, you know, if you was to summarize it, he's talking about being disciplined. Like if you wanna get somewhere, the discipline is if you wanna be a writer or an author, the discipline is every day you go write 
a hundred words, mm-hmm. even if it's twenty words. But the discipline is that I'm doing something actively towards my future. Yeah. Same way, if you want to raise a child to be the best type of human being that they can be, which every parent thinks they they want for their child, but then when their child steals from the shop and you say, "Give me that," don't don't do that again. Like, yeah, you can have it now, but like, like stop doing that, and then they keep doing it, mm-hmm. and you never actually nip it in the bud. Well, all you've taught your child indirectly is that it's all right. If I can do it and not get caught, it's okay. Whereas you touch fire once and someone tells you, well, now you felt it for yourself, but I'm letting you know now, do not do that again or else. It's a discipline. That's that Whitney Houston lyric. I, I know I, it's not I, right, I, but I, it's okay. That's so funny you said that. My, my daughter was with my dad one time and he called me like, she stole something at the shop. And I said to him, all right, watch when I get there. So on the way, I'm calling that mum like, this is what she done. The mum's, the mum's like, leave her, just, I'm like, no, I have to show her. Mm. I was going to take her down to the shop and make her hand it back. When I got in there, her face was a picture she knew she'd done wrong. And since that time, I'm not telling off, she's not done it again. Mm. But, yeah, it's discipline. Wait, some, some parents are scared to like, disappoint their child, or not disappoint their child, but like, make their child sad. Like, I don't want to punish you because, I'm scared that you know you're gonna not like me. That's fine. You'll be paying bail money. Yeah, <laughs> in 16 years. Yeah. That's literally what happened. Yeah, that's literally what happens when you got kids saying "shut up, Sharon" in Tesco. Like, I mean, maybe oh, you, maybe you're gonna that's have a pretty... great relationship, yeah. and that's what you want, so you don't want to upset them. Yeah. But when they're disgracing you in public, you cannot say, "Why is my child behaving like this?" No, but that's that's where you look inward, though, because kids learn from what they see. So, 100, yeah. percent you're telling someone else in front of your child to shut up mm. Mm. or they're watching something Imitation. that's how they learn right yeah. that's what i always say it's about leading by example yeah that's it if, if you're now finding yourself in these situations it's because of you you haven't led by example and you have to deal with it, mm. that's it. yeah yeah it's cool i know we focused a lot um on on mentoring and we kind of focus more on young people specifically but you mentioned something at the very beginning and said oh you know kind of in a joking way, like maybe I need a mentor. Yeah. And um, I, I actually, I'm of the belief that every single person needs a mentor or could at least benefit from a mentor. Um, like I just think about like when I was getting married, for instance, there was like a, a marriage program and there was the opportunity for us to be mentored by experienced couples who yeah. have done it. You know, I think about myself now, a good example is I think about myself now in September, I start a brand new role as assistant head teacher in a school. I've never been an assistant head teacher before. So I'd be lying to say that I'm going into that role and I know every single aspect of my job. I don't. Um, what I do have is a willingness to learn, but ultimately I need to learn from other people. Mm-hmm. So like I've broken down my role into about four or five different categories of things that I'm going to be overseeing. And I'm literally going to sort out, seek after someone that can mentor me in every department because it's valuable for me, but it will ultimately be valuable for the school. So I, I don't personally think that there's anything wrong in having a mentor. You it's as a professional needed. football player, I'm sure you've had mentors. No, I think, I think everyone needs a mentor. Everyone, everyone um, needs a coach, especially someone that's done it. Whatever you're trying to do, the best way to learn is to watch someone who's done it before you. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that's where I'm trying to come in for these young footballers, for these young athletes, because I've got to a point where this is what I know and this is what I've ever done. So I want people to better my path and follow it. You know? mm-hmm. So I didn't reach where I wanted to go to. Obviously, I wanted to go Prem. I wanted to play World Cups. I wanted to, but I played at Wembley and I played at um, these these grounds that I wanted to play at. Um, and it, it, it was only recently that I finally came to peace with that okay you didn't reach there but you did live out your dream of being a professional footballer you know? mm-hmm. so um, that's how I want to help these kids realise any dream they've got whether you're a footballer volleyball player basketball or anything that's yeah. just it's just about helping and that's become my passion to, mm-hmm. to help and um, to nurture the next generation no it's good man so what about you two um, in your adult life within your career or professions or maybe just an aspect of your life, whether it's fatherhood or being a businessman, like, do you have a mentor and, or, or do you see the value of having a mentor in, in, in some 
some area of your life as an adult, not as a child? Yeah, um, I definitely see the value because I feel like there's there's only so much you can do alone and there's only so much you can do by yourself and you have to you have to get advice from somebody. Um, and me, I, like this year alone, my goal is to read 50 books and then you're reading all of these things and you're gaining all of this knowledge, but just because you have it in your head, you don't know what to do with it. And that's where a mentor comes in because I always thought as long as you're reading and you're getting something from a book or maybe a YouTube video or whatever, however you learn, you've got the knowledge and you don't need a mentor. But then you try to apply it and then you find yourself struggling and then you speak to somebody and someone gives you advice and they're like, do it this way or this is how I did it or don't do this. And then you realise the importance of, of or why it's imperative to have a mentor. And I think that it doesn't matter what age, if you're trying to do something mm. and whatever it is, get married, raise a child, start a business, whatever, someone who's done it before and somebody who's attempted to do it before will still have more knowledge than you, whether they've failed or succeeded. It's good. It's good. What about you, Riz? Um, I know, I'm aware of the importance of it, and I agree with what you said to you. But um, I know I need to get one, especially when it comes to like for business, mm. a business mentor or coach. Mm. That would be great. I know it will aid to to my success. Mm. Yeah, uh, very important. In fact, I feel like I need it to t- take things to the next level. Yeah, yeah. I need someone around me that can just you know help guide me mm. um, on my journey. But I've got people around me that run businesses and I just kind of use them mm. like to kind of help me on my journey. Mm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them my mentors, but you know, um, I see them as mentors. Mm. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I, and the thing is there's such thing as pair, pair, pair mentoring, mm. which is kind of what you're describing, whether it's intentional or not. Um, and that sometimes can take the place of a, of a mentor in it being someone that's older than you or more experienced than you. I think ultimately, I think it's just that willingness to learn from others. But yeah. but I think what you said is, is key though. In isolation, I think being mentored by a football player, professional football player who has done it, it's very specific. You want to be a football player, I've done it. I know the good, the bad, the right turns. That's the bit. This is it, you know. But then we've also spoken about mentors where they don't know that they were being mentors. But they were because they, they were saying the right things and that was helpful. They were just being supportive. Yeah. And then you got the other types of mentors where they're leading by example. They ain't never said a word. Like there are people who would never speak to Cristiano Ronaldo, but because they watched him yeah. and how he presents as a professional athlete, yeah. forget football, as an athlete, he is mentor children without realizing. 100%. Look at Mbappe. Yeah. Great example. He's got pictures of Ronaldo all over his wall as a kid. Now look at him. Wait, which Ronaldo? Cristiano. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. It's true what T said. But you meant the better Ronaldo, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's another. That's another. I thought you. I thought you. Numbers meant, don't lie. I thought you meant the real Ronaldo, yeah, bro. Do that. T, 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 Numbers don't lie, do but we can we can have a <laughs> separate we're episode. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll do that afterwards. <laughs> but um, now what T said about the do's and the don'ts, like I know, I can pinpoint five things off the top of my head where I went wrong on my journey. I know the pitfalls. I know the highs. I know the lows. Mm. So. I can, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you and prepare you for it. Mm. So these kids that are coming up, they're blind to it. They'll hear the glitz and the glamour of football, but there's a side to it that no one ever tell you about the loneliness, the sacrifice. Mm. I can only imagine. The, 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 the parts that managers will tell you the great things, but they won't tell you the, I know the yeah. do's and the don'ts. Mm. I know what stopped me from reaching where I feel I should have been. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, it's key. I, I, I think one particular, I know I used the example of like being an assistant head and then I'm going to be looking for a mentor in specific areas of my job. But like I just think about someone, an example of a mentor who hasn't realised he's been, I think about like my father-in-law, for instance. Mm-hmm. Like I had a very kind of skewed perception of like what a man is. Um, and I guess I kind of also had a very skewed, I won't say it's skewed, but I always wanted a son, you know, um, and I always imagined what, what I'd be like as a father, what I'd do with my son, blah, blah, blah. Probably a lot of those things may be possibly toxic, maybe not. And then and then I got a shock and I had a do- daughter instead. And like now I can't imagine a world without my daughter. But I did have a bit of a fear. I did have some fear, which was like, 
I don't know what it's like to raise a daughter. But I didn't know what it was like to raise a son either. But I think because I'm a guy, it's like I assume I'm going to be a great same. dad. I had the exact same. Yeah. But when I had a daughter, I was genuinely like, rah, like, I don't know this. And I guess not because of pride or ego, I just didn't really think about it. I've got friends that have have that are fathers of daughters, but genuinely speaking, I, I didn't I didn't really know where to go to in terms of like, how do I be a father for a girl? Like generally speaking. And it's not something I've done still, but then I thought about it, I didn't even think about it. I just looked at my wife's dad and I thought to myself, this is a father of two two women. And they are, you know, great women in their own right. I just think about how my wife is and it's testament to her parenting and her father, not her father in particular, but when I think about him as a man and what he's done in her life, what he does and how he presents himself without him ever knowing. And I did, I think, send him an appreciation like message like a little while ago because as men, we don't do that either. But I, I messaged him and I just said to him, I said, I think it was Father's Day or something, but I just said to him, listen, I, I, I value what you do in your children's life because it's affected mine. The way you've raised your daughter has literally changed my life and my perception. If I didn't meet her, there's things about myself that I would never have changed. But because you raised her to not take crap, I can't give her crap. It's little stuff like that. You get it. But ultimately, him as an individual, he's so principled. He will turn in all his children tomorrow, but out of love. Not because he's taken the coward way out. It's out of love. I'm doing it so that you can understand. You couldn't make that decision and just think you're going to walk away from it. So... Next time, don't make that mistake. And he himself walks like that. He won't drive over 30 miles per hour. Wow. Everyone in the car is cussing him out. It, it, guys, I'm driving 30. <laughs> don't matter. So because he lives like that, it's like you know what you get with him yeah. every single day. And so like when I think about people that are good mentors, sometimes we don't realise that within ourselves, what we do, what you set up with Good Man Factory, what you've done as a professional football player, what you do day in, day out as a dad where you're not having conversations with your son, your people look at you and they admire you or they're inspired by you. So there's value in doing the right thing at the right time and being early by half an hour. Because you saying that challenged me and made me think, I always think it's all right to get to places for 12. And then what happened today? I was 45 minutes late, partly because I went to the wrong venue. But it took, but you hearing that, I'm like, cool, I'm glad you said that because other people would just kind of glorify it. Dami didn't say nothing to me when I walked in. He just spudded me. What? But he could have, when I walked in, what did you say to me when I was late? I didn't say hi to you. I was just off with you. I just oh, yeah, but, but, my, but my point is that he didn't say, <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, yeah. you're 45 minutes yeah, late. Yeah, yeah. You should be here half an hour, whatever. We, we might not say that to each other explicitly, but you said, no, when I go places, I'm, I'm half an hour early. And I hear that and I'm like, yo, that's a challenge. I, that's, I need to hear that cool, maybe I should practice being half an hour early, then I won't be half an hour late even if I went to the wrong venue or whatever it is. Well. Yeah, yeah, it's so. All about, it's all about perception. So yeah. I was taught, if you're late, that means you don't care. Mm. And that's not. Yeah, but that's true. But, yeah, we have this because, convo. Because you might, have, you might have, the train might have been delayed, missed the bus, but the coaches don't know that. Mm -hmm. They just think, mm -hmm. you don't care. Mm -hmm. like, it's like we said about the do-rags, like kids trained in do-rags, like, You've already got a perception of you that's not positive. Mm. That's only gonna enhance that and make it worse even more. So there's so many little things that these kids do that they don't understand it's bad or wrong mm. that you just need to open their eyes to it and make them aware of mm. the little things. And that's where a mentor comes in and and, and helps, you know. So I guess that's the, the the importance of understanding that your actions, like how people read your actions, mm -hmm. you know. But then it's, it's a difficult one because if people perceive you in your blackness as a certain way and they attach a stigma to it just because it's black, are you are you are you sending the right message if you tell a child to to stay clear of that? For example, wearing a do rag. No, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not only even black kids. School. It's not even black kids. So you might have um, a Caucasian kid who has a hairband come up in my day. He's not, he's not serious. He's not serious. He cares yeah. more about his hair, his, his fancy, his that. It's no, it's not taking away um, yourself and your individualism, but because that's coming a lot more into today's game. Mm. Growing up, there was no individualism. Everyone followed the strict rule. But it's just giving yourself the best possible chance to be who you want to be because we might have a more open mind, but you might have a coach or a manager or a manager, not even in football, just in life, a normal day, everyday life, that that's their mindset. So you got to find that balance, mm. you know? Yeah, no, yeah. I see I, I see what you're saying. Mm. 
I see what you're saying. I think, I mean, the reality of it is, is like, if we're going to go into like the whole blackness thing, is like, there are stereotypes of us that we can't control that other people have of us. Yeah. So it's like, so if you are late, for instance, couple that with the fact that a guy in his 50s or 60s who's been raised in a certain time where he already thought black boys were, were something, we can't control that. When he sees you now turn up late, I guess the argument is, yes, you was, you, you're not in control of that, but what you can be in control of, sort that out. And ultimately that is get get there on time 100%. or train hard or whatever it is because and like you said you could be black you could be white but so boys, there is girls, a perception black, of white, you in Asian. some way you can only counter that by just coming up and doing the best mm. or being the best mm. then that way no one can say nothing about you they try it with sterling perfect example they could talk about sterling all they want but sterling's going to win them the world cup maybe hopefully we'll see mm. but they talk it's about sterling home. all they want but he, but on the pitch Sterling is the most professional player I've ever. I've never seen Sterling like tell the manager to f off when he's walking off. I've never seen Sterling do a disrespectful interview or ever. But they try and sla- uh, slaughter him yeah, all all the time. But when you look at him, he's a model professional. The yeah, guy's got charities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gives to his mom. The guy's oh, doing the, good. These are the things, and he's an exceptional human for the, all the things that he does. But I saw an interview the other day where he said he was reading some of the um, some of the negative press about him. Some of the people on Twitter. And that's what I did. Mm. And it sent, it got to a point after every game, I was there reading, reading, reading. And it never, there was nothing enough. It could be a thousand, yeah, Jamal was sick today. Jamal was great today. Great cross. You look for the negative. That one guy that says, what was he doing on that? Stick in my mind. Mm. My day will be ruined. Mm. And this is going back to the mentoring thing and Sterling. These are the things that you've got to tell these kids. There's certain things you don't just look at. Mm. You know when you played well. You know when you played bad. Do not look at the tabloids, the Twitters, and the... How do you not, not how do you stay away? Yeah. How do you... I reckon more professional football players don't do it than oh, we, we realise. Some of, of them top, don't even have accounts. That's the mm-hmm. thing. A lot of the top boys don't have accounts. They've got... Um, Someone just manages it, it, yeah. the lower you go, the more interactive the players are. Mm-hmm. And it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing, but you've got to know in yourself, are you mentally tough enough yeah. to take that? You've got to really look at yourself in the mirror and, and be honest with yourself. At that moment, I was young. I just moved out. I'd moved up north to um, Yorkshire from London mm. at 20. Mm. I weren't ready for that. Mm. I weren't ready for it. I thought I was, but I wasn't. Mm. So, mm. yeah, those are the things. These are little things that you got to tell these kids. And how did that impact you, like, mentally? I was done. I was done. As soon as I got back home, I'd read it. I'd never forget. I'd read it. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Finish for the whole night. Mm. Sunday comes I have to get myself out of the rut and it's just not what I need I should be focusing on my recovery I should be focusing on getting ready for Monday training instead I'm thinking about a fake account a guy who's never kicked a ball before crazy wishes he was on that pitch doing what I was doing mm. and I'm worried about his opinion I zero. can't put a face if the guy could walk past I wouldn't ask him zero post zero followers but no but this <laughs> time following. it wasn't even the Twitter, it, Twitter's there but it was like a newspaper article kind of thing mm. online it would just finish me. And that was one of the, I wouldn't say it was one of the catalysts of um, one of my downfalls, but it was definitely part of it. Mm. You know, mm. it's definitely something that wasn't, it's not needed. Mm. Not needed. We, um, I mean, this, this, that particular part of the conversation was quite specific to football, but I kind of, it, it kind of segues quite good into something that we're all going to have to deal with either as fathers or as just mentors for young people is the pressure that comes with social media, how do you mentor and guide young people in a day, in, an, in, in, a, in a time where social media, unfortunately, has far more pressure? There's a lot more pressure that comes from social media than sometimes just your everyday interactions, interactions with parents. How do we kind of mentor and guide and support young people who have just grown up in the era of social media, where we grew up, where there was no internet, dial up internet or walk into the telephone box. So we we knew what life was like without it. And we know what life is. So if I wanted to, I really could survive and put my phone. If I lost my phone for a week, it's the best week of my life. Serious. I swear to you, if, I, if, if anything happens to my phone, it's happened in the past, where it's only because it's happened to me by force. I'm like, oh my gosh. 
Yeah. Wait, yeah. I don't have to <laughs> check my WhatsApp to see yeah. what I've missed. So I much I more did, productive, yeah. It's so, much, so much more productive. I, I put myself on a social media ban for like an hour a day mm. or weekends only. I've done that in the past and the week, like you said, it's the best week ever. Yeah. But... Yeah, but how how do, do how do we how do we how do we? It's something we haven't been taught to do, and a lot of young people are just gonna grow up in this in this situation. You know, literally, can you imagine people kill it, kill themselves every day, and the statistics that were related to the social media? That wouldn't have been a statistic that existed twenty years ago. Yeah, but people today are killing themselves based off of interactions on Twitter or social media, including young people. So how do we? mentor or guide young people around that what I mean, actual conversations or things can we do to help them there's no perfect answer i think for me it's just understanding that social media is your friend but it's also your enemy you can use it to your advantage for whatever good or bad um for entertainment for information for motivation but you also need to understand that there's a dark side to social media and it's just about letting people know that um, you, uh, you don't have to wait for somebody to get trolled. For example, how you tell the kids not to check or not to search yourself because you know that there's a, a dark side. So just to sort of manoeuvre um, in a way where it's, don't, it's not the be and end all, mm. but use it when you want to use it, use it to your leisure, but also understand that don't be on it too much or be mindful mm. of the other side of, of social media, you know, because um, it's, it's mad. Mm. I'll just throw on them documentaries on Netflix. <laughs> what's, what's that documentary on Netflix? Give, give us the plugs. Because I don't know them. I'm done no. F with cats. No, not even that one. Um, <laughs> that one's mad. <laughs> yeah, that one's crazy though. <laughs> but there's a documentary on Netflix. I can't remember what it's called, but it basically, like, the people that used to work for all these social media platforms basically expose how social media manipulates you and the, the downside to social media. I need to see it. So how, like, it so I can social, share it. The social... Social, social experiment. Social networks, the movie. Social right? network. If you yeah, know yeah. it and you're listening to this podcast, please just post a comment, comment, and and yeah, just let us know what that. Yeah. But one thing I learned from that document, a whole, a whole operation, organization behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Listen, one thing you've seen, seen it. The social dilemma. That's it. Social dilemma. That f that documentary, crazy. I feel like like ev like everyone should watch that to understand. Like, you're part of something yeah. that's been. And like, one thing I learned from that documentary is that um, Silicon Valley. Like all the, the the people at the, at the top that like, work at Silicon Valley, they don't allow their children to use um, like social media platforms, and mm. like they they don't they, they're not allowed to have a, a device, yeah. like a tablet, like an iPad mm. or an iPhone. Um, because they know they know the how effects, much it affects the detrimental yeah. effects of yeah. it. Yeah, which is funny because then we'll be putting our child in front of uh, a YouTube video for an hour of the day, and giving them iPads and saying it's good for them to learn from early, but then the did you say for an hour in, in the, of in the, the day? Morning. Yeah. Is that too, some, is that some some people give their longer children... Than I feel guilty when my daughter's been just... watching Coco Melon for 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> she ain't got no choice. She's she got to watch it. I got stuff to do. I got to work. <laughs> but yeah, like, I know you're right. Yeah. There. There's children that literally for like six hours. They'll they have just the freedom of it. Use it when you want. Or, or they use it to shut shut the, the child up. You know, you say, oh, no, it's needed though sometimes. Of course, in the car. <laughs> in the car. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> of course, of course. But but I think the bigger point is that like when you use it as a tool to teach your child, but not to talk to your child. Like when it just becomes your child's life, the, it becomes the child's parent. The iPad, yeah. it can be detrimental, and that's probably why they don't use it. It's kind of similar to the whole food thing. Mm. Many of the people that are like in charge of like the um world like the world food food organizations, like the big companies, for example. Um, the ones that sanction what type of food goes, or the, even just the, the 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 chain owners of like McDonald's and stuff like that. You think their children eat McDonald's oh. and KFC? These billionaires. Yeah. No, we can eat it. It's for us, but that's not for them. And it's similar with technology as well. It's controlled and managed in a way that, like you know, um, they've literally orchestrated this scenario. Why would they put their own families yeah. at that situation? Yeah. I think I think what T says right. Um, you gotta understand. Mm -hmm and make people aware when mentoring them that yes it's your friend but it's also your enemy so you've got to make them aware of the pitfalls of it not to put their hearts and minds into the um, the social media thing mm. it's not let them know it's not real like these people yes they love you but they also hate you mm. it's like when they're booing the anthem but they're celebrating a goal mm. it's like yeah 
love and hate. Love and hate. So and bad, yeah. you got to find that balance and make them understand. It's all about understanding. Mm. It's all about understanding. That's what I'd say to these kids. Like, do you understand the benefits of it? Mm. And then can you handle the negative side? Mm. As parents, what's your approach? That's It's one thing talking to young people who aren't your children about but you're, you're still educating them, you're telling them, you're teaching them, hoping they listen. But what would you put in place for your children or what do you put in place for your children to protect them from social media? In life, it's, you know what, it's similar to what you were saying about that documentary. And I feel like with knowledge, sometimes too much knowledge isn't good. You, you get super paranoid and, <laughs> or you try to share it with a bunch of people and no one gives a toss. You know, you read something in a book and you're debating it for hours and you're like, wait, I've read it in the book I've got the facts to, to back it but you're telling me no I'm wrong um, so I think it's different with your kid it's like alright cool I know that I, dairy is, isn't good I know McDonald's isn't good I know social media isn't good at times and stuff like that so I might not be able to do it with my surroundings people around me or people that uh, are already sort of in that life and it's, it's become the culture but with you Oh, it's easy. It's, you've never had it. So you won't know it exists. You, yeah. you won't see the, the friend friendly side of it. So you don't ever have to know the enemy side, um, the, the, the detrimental side, side of yeah. it. So it's um, it's easy. It's just kind of like, cool. Well, so, it's so interesting. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah I, I, that's you, that's... it doesn't exist. So yeah. to you, you, for now, it's easy. Maybe later on, it might be a problem. But it's, not, if you, it's, it's yeah. like the sex talk. If you've never had sex or you've never had interest in the opposite sex or same sex or whatever, I never have to worry about that conversation yet because you don't have that curiosity for it just yet. It's easy. Mm. So wait, do you, so what, what What does that look like for your child practically? It doesn't exist. Oh, your child doesn't it's, have. It. Ask Malik. <laughs> well, it's, it's so it shouldn't similar. have Instagram anyway, but in terms of like technology and I, stuff like that. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. There was like, in terms of food, doesn't eat anything right or anything that's detrimental to his health you don't feed him doesn't <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, red meat and stuff like that yeah. it's not in his diet he doesn't eat no. red meat nope but there was, that's good. as in he would never like let me tell you we could be driving and someone could say do you want McDonald's ah what what Ah, you start screaming <laughs> like you said you know candy man three times in word. the mirror or something <laughs> but um it's uh, there was one day I came in uh, to, to get him from his grandma's and she had given him Chinese and I looked at his eyes and I said, I will never be able to stop him from loving Chinese. He's now had crack. <laughs> but because he's now experienced it, yeah. it now becomes yeah, yeah. a problem. Now I can have that conversation with you where it's like, okay, cool, you know, Chinese food, only have it in moderation. You see your grandma. I'm not saying she did anything. <laughs> I'm not saying she's a bad person. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk. Um, and then I had to have that conversation. I'm prepared to have it because I will never tell him not to do something for, for, for the sake of, I will always have a reason behind it. Mm. But some, I, I only had to share that, well, and KFC, because she gave him <laughs> <laughs> She gave him KFC as well. But I didn't ever have to have that conversation yeah. until there was a catalyst. And, yeah, and I was prepared because I had a reason for it all. Mm. Um, what would you do? I don't know. I don't have kids, so I'm I'm literally just learning from from your answers. Mm. Like I just wanna, I don't, I wouldn't know how to go by. I've I've never thought. But you about haven't it. Got, you haven't got a specific viewpoint on it, so you're not kind of like very um, left or very right about it. You're just like, like what he said, you know, just just don't expose them to certain things. But I know it gets to a point where you, like other people teach your your children yeah, stuff. I'm about to say that. Then I don't know how to deal with that. What do I do? Mm. Wait, like, you just what, tell them the, the, the reason. Yeah as into why it, it never existed yeah. in your world before. Do you know what? I'll probably add to that, that I would find an example of something, someone that's been affected by it and like tell them a story of, okay, for example, make it worse. There's this family <laughs> member, there's this family member that eats loads of Chinese. That's why they're fat like that. I mean, Let me tell you something. 100%. So do you want to be like that? Have you seen the oh, impact of crack? People saw the consequences of <laughs> <they're still> doing <laughs> it. <laughs> it don't work. You know they're what? like, I want to like, try that for myself. <laughs> I, 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 the lucky thing he about, looks happy. <laughs> no, nah, literally. The lucky thing about T is he's got understanding now with his partner. Mm. So they're both on the same page. Mm. So... If your ch if your one partner doesn't mind social media or doesn't mind bad food, and you're really against both, there's gonna be some sort of clash. So, mm. 
going on to picking your partner wisely that's another topic as well but yeah you gotta be <laughs> you gotta be like my my i think my daughter social media i've seen a my daughter's got a social media account an instagram mm. which i'm not happy about but it's something that okay i had to compromise okay it's gonna be private not anyone can see it. it's got to be friends and family only mm. so she's already exposed to the other time i date I want to take a picture of you. She's gonna pull up. She's gonna pose. Mm. So I know that social media is it's, is gonna be a part of her to, life. Yeah. Right. So now I'm gonna teach her the pitfalls of it mm. and how to use it. Because mm. my daughter's not gonna be on it just half how. naked doing a madness. It's not. Mm. You, that's not gonna happen. But yeah. Mm. So yeah, you said something key there, which is um, like good. It's basically good communication or consistency between the stakeholders and that's hard to come by mm. that's really hard to come by especially if you're not on the best term they might just do it out of spite mm -hmm. yeah just don't want my kid ain't Chinese next time you FaceTime your kid <laughs> she's banging Chinese like prawn <laughs> <laughs> balls chicken balls <laughs> soy sauce oh everything. my god you know? so, yeah. I just think life is always easier when you're on the same page and it's just about finding a way mm. and whatever your solution is it will come whatever your solution, your solution, it will come. You just got to find it. Some people it's easier, some people it takes a bit longer, but your life becomes easier once you sorted out that problem. Mm. And that's it. It's yeah. got a benefit though as well. Does it align with your goals? If we're, if we're going to mentoring kids, athletes, if you want to be a professional or anything, you've got to spend more time on your craft than you do on anything else. Mm -hmm. So if you're spending three hours on social media, you're maybe spending six hours training. So these are the things that you got to mm. teach these kids. But our goals have to align, right? For example, so, if, if you bring me on board to mentor mm -hmm. one of the footballers, yeah. because you're bringing me on board, I'm going to ask you questions to make sure that my goals align with yours. If I don't ask you questions or we don't communicate or anything, or there's a lack of transparency, then you come in one day and the kids are wearing do-rags and headbands or sweatbands, mm. you're going to look right. at me like I'm crazy. 100%. But we've never had that conversation yeah. to make sure our goals align. So now we can have that. You can communicate, tell me why, all of this. And eventually we'll be on the same page. Or I might disagree with certain things, but because it's not part of the the end goal or it doesn't, because you know sometimes you care about things that don't attribute to the end goal. 100%. It, it cares. Just principles for mm. you and stuff. Mm. Yeah, sacrifices yeah. you gotta make sacrifices to get to certain places. Facts, mm. always, mm. and that's that's one of the biggest things that I tell these kids: sacrifices. Mm. Yeah, so. yeah, which is not an easy concept. Sacrifice until you're older. I think. I find. I think in your world of football, children learn that a lot quicker. No, I think. I think that's. I think you just gotta have the conversation, mm. because if you're. Um, it could be any walk of life. Like you could want a doctor, you could want to be a teacher, a lawyer. You might have, we might be all going out. You've got a finals or an exam tomorrow. You can't go. Mm. That's the sacrifice. Mm. In mm. sport, your friends are drinking. You got pre like my friends went out the other day. I had pre-season on Monday. I can't drink no more. Because when I'm running, you're not running with me. Mm -hmm. mm. When I'm trying to get to that line and I can't because I've been drinking, I can't do it. So they're the sacrifices that these people have to make. But was was that discipline ingrained in you, or was it? How did you come about that? To I thought it. Was, I thought it was natural, and I had it. But growing up and realizing it was my mum teaching me these things. Mm. So as I said, going back to the first question, that was my first mentor. Mm. You know, so never drank until I was twenty one. Training, I was always there. Sleep pattern eating patterns mm -hmm. the boys went I in 2008 Did you? no you didn't go but um i couldn't go i trained next i'd train the next week it wouldn't mm -hmm. that was the sacrifices like even down to the point where people your sacrifices gets to there's levels to it like my boy got married best friend got married on a saturday i told him don't get married on a saturday i'm not coming he thought i was joking you're my best man though i went his best man i had a game that's happened twice. Mm. Can you make that sacrifice? Mm. And that's what footballers at the highest level are paid for. The sacrifice. Away from the, family. And the mental ability mm. to perform with 100,000 people screaming at you. It's not what you could, it's partly what you can do with football, but it's also the mental sh part of it. That's what you're paid for. The struggle, the sacrifices. That's what it is. Mm.
So that's, mm. And that's what I tell these, that's what I tell these boys. So uh, you might go to your friend's wedding and it might not be an issue to I you. Know, I had the same issue. I'm not for football. Um, I had a shoot. Uh, so I had to shoot in a short film, um, which was going to festivals. And my mate got married on the day. Um, so I had to leave early. Bearing in mind, I had to do a reading in the church and stuff like that. I had to leave early, go, and then came back later on. But it's just, it's sometimes it's, it's yeah. out of your hands. It's kind of like, okay, cool, I'm not going to do it then. And Literally. I'm, no one's given up their career unless you're at that stage or that level where you can. And that's, yeah. And it might not even be, it might not have affected my career, but my craft was more important. I apologize. To this day, his wife is like, Still gives me stick about it. Mm. I would. I would you. I'm sorry, but but I had, I had a game. I do. I was do. I missing my game for your wedding? Like, I'm sorry. I turned up late, and I'm, yeah. I do wonder me. if people that, not in every case, but I do wonder if people that lack that discipline or understanding of sacrifice, treat other people more harshly because they lack it themselves. Um, I, I, I'm not saying that. Obviously, I wouldn't be crazy. I wouldn't be offended if my best mate or one of my best mates couldn't make it to my wedding. But if they couldn't make it to my wedding because they are playing a football Game. match, not like Saturday League. Oh, 100%. Like we're talking about professional, you, you're you shooting for a film. It's your career. It's your, yeah. Like, I think I've got a bit more rationale without even being like so big on discipline and sacrifice. A bit of rationale to recognise. That's your that's your career. That's your, I'm sure Cristiano Ronaldo has told many family members, you guys aren't seeing me for dinner on this day. Yeah. Or I'm not doing whatever. And no one then judges him on that. You get it, like so. I thought I do wonder sometimes: is it people that lack that kind of like same understanding, or is it just that we're too emotive sometimes? And I have them. Go on, so go on. No, go on, go on. I think it's all about your circle, isn't it? Like so, surround yourself with like-minded people, and you go so much mm -hmm. further. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you don't understand. That's fine. I know you don't understand because we're not on the same path. We're not, we're not trying to reach the same goal. So yeah, you don't understand the reason I'm doing it, but I do and that's fine for me. Mm -hmm. That's enough for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think similar. I think people are more understanding when the sacrifice pays off. Mm -hmm. Like I remember missing birthdays when I was going to drama school. People are like, what? And you know, you're you're losing friends. But when, you know, you're shooting on TV and stuff like that, it's oh yeah, miss whatever. Like, it's fine. Like, oh I get it. Oh when when's it coming out? It's the same friends or the same people. And I think that's just life. Once the sacrifice pays off People don't care. You can mm. miss whatever. But if you're, let's say now you're missing your best friend's wedding 10 years ago when On the come up. your Sunday league, mm. you're not professional yet and you're training and you're taking it serious. So will he still, would you even still be friends today? I, obviously, I don't know him. But oh, yeah, we're, we're, still, we're still friends today, but it doesn't matter what you think. Mm. That person is on a path and that's what he thinks is right. Mm -hmm. That's key. I think that's key, yeah. It's when you do stuff with, when I say good intentions, it's quite subjective, but I'm not doing it to be malicious towards you. Sure. And I'm very conscious of the implications of my decision, but I'm doing it because there's a reason. It's not out of negligence. Like I have this to do, I've got this to do. Um, and I think that's the difference. And I think ultimately if like, I think that's key to have, that's a massive skill to have, because if you don't have that, you're the same person that will go to that wedding and your manager says, where was you? And you're like, oh, and you get it. He's going to say to you, but you knew that you needed to be here. I, this is your career that we're talking about. And as sad as it sounds, that wedding is still going to be your mate after. But that game could be the game where your scout that was, was at the, that game. That was, that's <laughs> the thinking. You get it. Like, you that's just don't want to lose on opportunities. Yeah. So it is kind of an elite mindset. I don't want to say it's not an elite mindset, but it, it tends to be those that are elite in their profession or at the pinnacle of it have that ruthlessness with, with, with good intentions. I think, in, in, in essentially, you've got to be unreasonable with your goals. Mm. It's an elite well, mindset. But non negotiable. But it is, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's an elite yeah. mindset. Yeah. You can train yourself to have it, but not everyone has it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, this is where the mentors come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentoring is cool, guys. I'm gonna, you know, start to round up now. But I think before we leave, uh, before we leave, before we round up, I think what would be quite good is just to kind of summarize from each person what you think you could do, or possibly what someone else could do to be a good mentor to a young person. So it could be a, a few gems, um, or, f or or practical things you think would be beneficial to anybody that's trying to mentor young people or what you do yourself. And I'm going to start off with you, Jamal. Um, for me, 
I'm going to say it's all about routine. My routine has got me to the point where I am today. So the one thing I would say is you need you need a routine and you need to understand that regardless of whatever goes on, you need to stick to it. You need to be consistent with it. So I feel like those are the things that will get you to where you need to get to. And as I said, you've got to be unreasonable with the path that you're on. So it might be raining, it might be snowing, it might be sunny. You might have a bad day. Your missus might be annoying you. Wherever it might be annoying you. Baby's been crying all night. Your routine to the end goal. Like have that. Know what you want. Write down your goals. Know where you want to get to. And if nothing, anything that you're doing doesn't align with that end goal, don't do it. Mm. And that is the mindset that you have to have if you want to make. If someone you want someone to pay you for what you enjoy, that's how you have to get there. That's how you get there. Sorry. I like it. I like it. What about you two? Um, I would probably say patience. I think just from everything everybody said, it just there's a level of patience. There's a level of sacrifice that you have to be patient to see the rewards. There's a level of sac- um, patience that you need to have when you're mentoring somebody, like when you're talking about understanding um, and, and trying to find out what the solution is. And I just think as long as you're a patient mentor and as long as you're, you're is it mentee? Yeah. yeah. Is patient and understands patience, then... You, you'll always be fine because no one's perfect, but you make a lot more mistakes when you're not patient. Well, in my experience anyway. Mm, that's good. What about you, Riz? Um, even if you're not in a position of a mentor yourself, but what do you think are the skills or traits of a good mentor? Or what, Someone what? that takes the time out to understand, you know, the mentee just understanding the mentee and then you can go about giving them the best advice. Would you agree? Yeah. Is, that, is that in a one-to-one capacity or? One-to-one, groups? I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's, that's, what, that's how I see it. I think I'm open to doing one-to-ones with the kids, the men, the girls, the boys, and also groups because I think that's how you get the best dynamics from people. Mm. So... Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, the reason why I said that is because, like, I would like to do that. That's something I would like to do. Like, just get a young person that reminds me of myself and just try and assist them. I like, understand what they're going through. Because there's things that I went through when I was young, but I couldn't open up to someone like a mentor and reveal loads of things for them to understand me. So, yeah, I, I feel like if I, was, if I had just exposed myself more and just, you know, helps whoever was trying to support me understand my way of thinking or just the way I am, they would have supported me better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I think for me, um, the, the words that come to mind, I think, is um, consistency. Um, ultimately, you can be all of those great things, but if you're not consistent, it's just to the detriment of the young person or whoever it is you're mentoring. Yeah. Um, understanding the person, the people is always key. Um, and I think probably a, a trait that's that's key for everybody, I think that sometimes we miss is communication. And people often confuse communication with your ability to speak. But actually communication is the ability to listen, receive, process, and then speak upon what's been heard. And so it's a better skill to understand and try to be understood. And I think if you're prepared to understand a young person that's more valuable than you trying to be understood because as an experienced footballer, for instance, or as an experienced teacher, it's very easy for me to be like, you know, this is what you need to do. Like, listen to what I say. I want you to understand me. But actually, where that child is at, the only way I'm going to understand that and meet their need is to listen Listen and understand them. them. And I think that's a skill that not everyone has. A lot of people are very good at telling other people what to do but not necessarily listening to what that person needs yeah. to, to provide for them um, so yeah but listen gents it's been an amazing episode probably one of my favourite episodes in a long long time um, I wish everyone could hear our, our conversation before this but <laughs> <laughs> some things are left unrecorded but um, but yeah no, it's been a great episode thank you again 
uh, Jamal. Um, check out That's Jamal it. as well, by the way. He plays for Boromwood, Boromwood FC. Yes. Yeah, Boromwood FC. So uh, a very polished uh, football player. So go check him out. And I mentioned earlier that Riz was a special guest, but Riz isn't a special guest. He's just special. He <laughs> is, if you didn't know, uh, one of the two uh, original founders of the Goodman Factory. So the other one is the the board head man, the handsome one on the mic that, <laughs> on, not on the mic, on the camera that likes to hide himself. But those two gents are the reason why you guys have this podcast today. So I want to say a thank you to them. Thank you to Tolu. Thank you. As always, um, dropping these gems. And again, because we like you so much, because we are in the business of blessing other people, if you use the uh, discount code GPOD1, on our Goodman Factory website, that is www.goodmanfactory.com. You can get yourself a 15% discount on any of our Goodman products. So use that today to bless yourself or bless someone else. It has been great. Good luck to England tonight. Uh, predictions, lads, quick. England to win? Yeah, England to win. 2-1. England. Sterling. There you go. You, you heard it here first. We predicted it. Looking forward to uh, the celebration podcast that's coming soon. Hopefully. Yeah. Come on, Sterling. <laughs> See you guys later. Bless.